Hi, I'm Dr. Tim, founder of Dr. Tim's Aquatics. I'm going to talk about test kits today, yeah, how to use them, and two common problems with test kits. So before we get started, when using test kits, you have to realize they do have hazardous chemicals, so it's always best and you'll get much better results if you have some latex gloves, which you can pick up at any local store. Okay. Don't leave uh, your test kits laying around. Don't use them near food or any drinking beverages because they, like I said, do have hazardous chemicals. So for this example, I'm going to use two common test kits, one from Aquarium Farm for nitrite and also the nitrite test kit from Salifert. But what I'm going to talk about applies to ammonia test kits, nitrite test kits, all the different versions, okay, from all the different manufacturers. So we open up. Now the aquarium farm is drops. We're going to fill up the vial to the line. We're going to add so many drops. The Salifert test kit is a uh, powder. So you have a vial, you have some powder, and they give you a little scoop to scoop the powder with. As a comparison, I'm going to also use a Hawk test kit, which is a little uh, higher standard, a little better quality than what's available to the hobbyist. I've prepared a sample so it can accurately measure everything out. When you're dipping test kits in your water, don't take the water from the very surface. If you're going to go into the tank, go into the tank down below with the tube upside down, turn it back up so that it will fill. That way you don't get any oils or scum from the surface. Okay. Measure out five mils. Same with the Salifert kit. Then the Hawk. Okay. The aquarium form. Invert the bottle straight up, add five drops, two, three, four, five. The common tendency is to put your thumb over the vial and shake. Not really the best thing to do. You should use some piece, a piece of plastic if you have it or something other than your finger. So we're going to shake it up. Okay, and It's got to sit for a few minutes. Salaford kit, we take a scoop. Put it in there. Put the top on. Shake it up. Then the hawk. It's also pre measured uh, pillows. One pillow, pair of scissors. Always nice to have a, a waste receptacle to put things in and drop that in. Again, cover the top and give it a good shake. Okay, now with these test kits, you normally wait 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been our 10 minutes, or in some cases, five minutes on these tests. What you can see on the uh, API test kit is the color is kind of a greenish light blue, which is basically zero. And on the uh, Salifert, again, they have a color chart. And you look at the, the solution, and there's no color, which means that it's zero. So you might be thinking, oh, this is great. I've got no nitrite. But look at the deep purple purple red color on the hot kit. It's hard to tell with these hot kits in a, in a video until we get close up, but basically with this color wheel you can see that this red, this deep red, is off the scale. What the point here is, is that when you have too much of the chemical you're testing with some of these kits, the kits will not register it. They'll actually give you a false low reading. These two kits are saying the nitrite is actually is zero when in fact the nitrite is sky high. 
So you have to make sure that your test is in the range. Whatever you're measuring has to be within the range of their color chart. If it's way over the color chart, as this sample is, you're going to get a false zero reading. To fix that, you have to do dilutions, and that's why you should have some distilled water nearby. And when would this be the case? If you set up a brand new aquarium and you haven't used, say, Dr. Tim's one and only nitrifying bacteria, you can kind of expect that you should be seeing high nitrite. So you've got to take the test kits as a tool. You've also got to think about the situation. If you've had a fish die off, if you've had a catastrophe, if it's a brand new tank and you think your nitrite should be high, then do some dilutions as we're going to do next to get the water sample down into the range that the test kits can measure. Okay, so to show you this, what I've done is I'm going to take a uh, small sample of that first sample that I tested that's the really high nitrite and I'm going to add a little bit to some DI water that I've already prepped Let me, uh, cover it well give it a shake you know, mix it up okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to rerun the test so we have our uh, API test and this is also going to bring up the second point that I want to talk to you about today and that's units That's why you always put the cap on. If things fall over, you didn't spill anything. A scoop there. Cap back on. Give it a good shake. API kit. Add five drops. Yep. Give it a good another shake. Need another pillow for the hot kit. Okay, and we've got to wait a few minutes for the colors to develop. All right, so we've waited the uh, requisite time, and this is the API kit. And you can see that with that dilution, we're no longer in the light blue-green. We're down here in the purple, and it's reading about one part per million. The salifert, well, it's reading pretty much the same. Right in there between the one and the two somewhere. Normally you would hold this down flat, but you can see that we're definitely registering. It's not that clear liquid that we had when we originally did the undiluted sample. And it registers again about one part. With the Hawk test kit, it's a little hard to see, but you can see that we are definitely registering a color. And if you were to look in here, you would see that it's going to be about 0.2 to 0.3. We're thinking we'll hold it one and one but this is registering 0.2 to 0.3 and this is what I'm talking about with units different test kits have different units it's much like if you were asked to measure something if you were to measure it in inches say the length of this you would see that it's about three and a half inches long but if you ask maybe a European who does metric they would say oh no it's about um, let's see eight and a half nine centimeters it's the difference in the units and a lot of times when people are talking about their test results they don't give the units and with certain test kits like the API and the Salifert 
they measure what's called the ion, and they're in a different unit scale than the Hawk test kits or what we scientists normally use, which is the nitrogen scale. And there's a chart I'm going to put up now that's going to explain this in more detail. Okay, so you saw that there were two different values for the same exact water sample. The Salifert and the API test gave a much higher reading than the Hawk. What's going on? Well, especially when you're measuring ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, you have to look at what the units are. Are they measuring the ion or are they measuring it in the nitrogen base? The Hawk test kit measures in the nitrogen base, and that's commonly what scientists do. It's commonly when we talk about a value of, say, don't get above five parts per million. We're talking about ammonia nitrogen. And as this graph shows, this is where the nitrogen base is. One part ammonia nitrogen will be converted to one part nitrite nitrogen, which will be converted to one part nitrate nitrogen. But if you're measuring with ion test kits, it's going to be much higher. That one part nitrite nitrogen is actually, when you measure just the nitrite ion, going to give you a value over three times higher, which is why the Salifert and the API test were much darker colored. You thought they had more. They were near one unit versus the Hawk test kit, which was at 0.2 to 0.3. And that's because of the units they were using. You have to make sure you're not mixing units and be knowing that when you're talking to someone, you're comparing values or you're calling us or talking to us, uh, maybe an email, what are the units? What's the test kit you're using? It's very important so we know where on this scale you are and where your real values are.